All right. So once again, um, good evening, everyone. Um, so wherever you are um, in the part of the world, um, it is evening where I am um, in the United Kingdom. So if you are somewhere in Africa, maybe in Nigeria, and then you know um, it's evening where you are too. So um, and if you're in the United States, or if you, I know a few um, of our friends are in Canada. I don't know exactly what time is it in Canada, whether it is midnight or early hours in the morning, but again, um, greetings to you uh, wherever you are um, in the part of the world. And I want to use um, this opportunity to welcome you um, to the day three um, of our ISO 27017 Cloud um, Computing Foundation um, training. Um, you would agree with me that, you know, it's been um, a journey um, since we started um, two days ago. Um, Roy has been wonderful. Um, you know, we had some technical, um, you know, challenges in between, but again, yeah, we we're able to overcome it. Um, you know, the first day was excellent. Um, Roy was able to take us through that journey by laying um, a very, very good foundation um, on cloud computing, okay? And, um, and on top of that, yesterday, um, Roy spent quality time um, explaining um, what 27,017 is. And he went back and forth um, trying to compare the 27,017 um, to the 27,002, all right? By now, um, you would know, or, you know, that um, 27,017 is just an offshoot um, of the 27,002, all right? And we looked at all the extended controls yesterday. There are about seven of them. What makes it different, all right, um, from um, the 27, ISO 27,001 or ISO 27,002? And, and I think towards the end, um, Roy also um, walked us through um, the cloud, the data, uh, jurisdiction, and regulation, all right? Um, and there he was able to explain the importance of locality um, to us, uh, that wherever the instance of your data is, then you need to take cognizance um, of uh, the regulation of that particular jurisdiction. Um, there was a few explanations around. So, for example, um, if you have your data in the United States, or um, if you have your data, or when I say your data, and I'm talking about the instance of your cloud, where your data is stored, you know, per that instance, if you have them in the UK, for example, then um, GDPR, you know, will play a big role, you know, when it comes to, you know, regulatory compliance. Uh, but from the explanation that we had yesterday, that US can be a little bit different uh, because they do not have one single you know, data privacy law uh, that governs, you know, um, data in the United States. Um, they do have um, um, local laws, all right, but they do not have one single law as we have here um, in, the, um, in Europe um, and especially um, in the UK. So, you know, thumbs up for us um, in, in the EU uh, because we have the GDPR, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, for few, maybe for some of you, um, that have learned GDPR, um, the, the commentary around that, not the commentary, but, you know, uh, the, in the early days of GDPR, I think all across the nations of the world, um, there was just a big um, um, fork around it that, you know, it was the best, you know, data privacy regulation that actually came out of Europe, even in the world as a whole. And guess what? Uh, most uh, nations of Africa have started, adopt, uh, they've started adopting uh, GDPR. So, for example, where I come from, Nigeria, um, you know, we've had, we have we have adopted GDPR, and we call us, you know, um, NDPR, uh, which um, is just a copycat um, of the GDPR. And I said, I think Ghana as well. Um, Ghana has something. I don't know what that is called. Um, if you're Ghanaian, if you're Ghanaian here, you know, thumbs up. Um, you know, I don't know what that that is called, uh, but they've also adopted. Um, um, GDP as well, um, they, you know, so, you know, make it their whole or suit their, their country. And so many other, uh, so many other countries 
um, like that. You know, so that just only just tells us, you know, how good GDPR is and how, you know, most, you know, nations of the world, they're looking at it, you know, they've looked at it and they've started, you know, adopting the same um, practice. So jurisdiction uh, is very, very important when it comes to um, cloud. All right, um, so you want to take note of that. I know this is a foundation course and uh, we're not able to go into depth what that means. Uh, but again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you want to learn more um, about cloud computing, uh, then come to Smart Learning. I have a lot in my bag um, that, you know, bag of experience uh, that I will be more than happy uh, to share uh, with you. All right, then towards the end of the training yesterday, um, we looked at the market acceptance, all right, um, of um, ISO 27,017. And we looked at the major drivers, all right. We could see, you know, the big three um, cloud computing organization, the likes of Microsoft, um, AWS, which is, you know, Amazon. Then we could also see Google as well. So they are all backing, you know, 27,017. So what that means for you is, you see, you can never go wrong, you know. So when you see big players in the industry backing up a particular standard, then it just means that, you know, the, you know, um, the, the, uh, the, the need, all right, um, for, um, for that knowledge, you know, would always be there, all right? And don't forget here that when we acquire knowledge or skills, you know, uh, what we're trying to do or what we want to do at the end of the day is to translate, you know, uh, to, to exchange that, you know, for money, all right? So uh, once you're good and you know this very well, then you can exchange it um, for money, you know, uh, with, you know, maybe prospective employers or, your current employer, all right? So the market acceptance is great as well. So without wasting too much time, um, I will be taking you through um, this journey that I call career progression, or in other words, you know, the career path. Um, and I have, um, I have my agenda this way, um, in no particular order. I will try as much as possible to stick um, to um, this timeline, but where I am not. Um, so, uh, for some of you that have been my student, um, you know I don't like to rush things. All right, um, I I kind of take my time, and reason is just very simple. There's no point, you know. So if I bring up this slide and it's all about just rushing it and just you know trying to you know you know make up the time or meet up with the time, then maybe I will miss out, or you will miss out on something that's very very important. I haven't said that I'm conscious of time, don't get me wrong, uh, but I, I like to just, you know, build a foundation so that, you know, when you leave here informed, it's good. You know, you could, you know, just go be, you can be anything that you want to be within this, you know, within this um, cybersecurity um, domain. So we're going to be looking at your career progression. And the question we're going to try to ask there is, where do I go from here? All right. So, um, you, you, you're here the first, second, and the third day. The question is, what does this mean? Where do I take this? And this is the challenge that most people have, all right? Um, not that, you know, you're not clever. Um, not that, you know, you don't go for, you, you don't attend courses. We don't know how to translate that knowledge. We don't know how to take this knowledge and add it to whatever we already have, you know, and make it one. Don't forget that, you see, knowledge is power but you can take this knowledge that you have acquired and exchange it for money, <laughs> right? That's what a lot of us do. We exchange that, you know, the knowledge for money. But the question is, among everything that I've learned, you know, since this long lockdown, among all the things that I know or that I've learned, you know, um, you know um, from the, all the, work, the job that I've done, you know, where does this cloud thing fit in? And where, what can I... How, how can I use it to my advantage? And that's the um, um, question that we have. And I would try as much as possible to help you to answer those questions. All right, those are yearnings in our heart. Um, and I would, I would try as much. I, I mentioned something earlier on that it's not because you don't do short courses. As a matter of fact, some of you, you know, you watch a lot of videos, you know, you've seen a lot of free stuffs. And, and they are all great, all right? Like this was, is free as well. They are all good, you know, but to put them together is the problem, all right? If I can use the word couple, you put them together, it's the problem. And I want to help you to see, you know, to put them together 
um, in the next um, few minutes. All right. But then um, as a business as well, I'm going to be showing some, some of the discounts that we have. Um, so if it interests you in any way, um, and if you've been blessed with what we have shown you so far in the last two days, and you want to take this further, and you think you know, um, smart learning can help you, then by all means, um, reach out to us. I'm going to be showing you what we have as a discount as well. Then um, the third one on the agenda is the assessment. So when we had the 27,001, and we had a fantastic run, all right, the 27,001 foundation training. And um, at the end, we also had um, assessments. So people you know, uh, were able to assess your knowledge. And on the back of that, uh, we gave you a certificate of participation, all right? Uh, we will do the same as well. Um, so um, after the career progression, after I've talked about the discount, uh, my colleague, um, I hope Tunde is here already. Uh, Tunde, please um, boss me or just, you don't need to, call but just say oh while i'm on the call um so that you know we get the uh the link ready and uh we can now we will share it um on the um on our group here uh you can just click on the link and um boom you know uh the link will open and you'll be able to do the assessment the assessment is going to be for one hour okay um so once i finish with whatever i'm going to show you today I will take that link, or today we'll take that link, and it would put it um, on um, on there, and you can start the assessment, and we will time you. And when you finish, or you just when you when you finish the question, the question is twenty four questions uh, for one hour. You just click submit, and you would automatically be scored. All right. Um, and once you do that, uh, once you get your score, um, you could take a screenshot of it and send it. Um, to us. I'm also going to provide my email as well. Today, if you're here, can you confirm, please? Ari, I don't know if Ari is on the call. Hello. Ari, you're there. Okay. We're not sure if today is there. Ari? Okay. Um, if you can, if you can reach out to Tunde, I, I know the last time I spoke to him, it was it was a bit busy. Um, kindly reach out to him um, so that we have the link um, ready and handy, um, and we can just you know uh, populate it um, in the uh, chat box so that people know. And some of you might maybe you might have some challenges in terms of um, um, clicking on it, but if you provide your email, we have a way of just routing uh, the information to you um, ASAP. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, we'll come back to all of those questions. Don't worry. All the certificates, just as we did. So Yasni, is it Yasni or Yasin? Um, yeah, you were here. I remember your name. So exactly the way we did it the last time. Okay. Um, so exactly, uh, we did it the last time. Can I be allowed in, please? Um, exactly the way we did it last time. Um, yeah. So let's, let's do this quickly. All right. Um, so do me a favor, Ari, please, um, if you can keep it high um, on the, um, the, some of the questions there. Um, I would, in between, I will be coming to those questions, but I think what I would do is I'll just leave the questions um, or answering the questions to maybe towards the, the, the hand. Then after that, we've done the assessment, just as we did the last time, there'll be question and answer. I'm gonna open the floor. Um, you can talk back to me and ask all of your questions that you might have. Um, then, you know, then there will be announcement and, um, you know, that will be it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, so ignore um, the actors. They showing down what, but ignore it. All right. <laughs> so, um, so the use case here um, that I'm going to be considering today to explain, um, um, to explain to explain this journey to you guys is um, I'm looking at two use cases. Um, number one, the non-technical, and number two, uh, the technical. And when I say use case, uh, when I say actor, I'm referring to you, my audience, um, tonight, all right? I'm referring to you. So my assumption, all right, and I use the word assumption, is you would fit in into one or two of this category, all right? Um, so there are some of you that are technical, all right? And there are some that are non-technical, all right? And don't, don't, don't worry about the definition of technical or non-technical because I'm going to come back um, to that 
that shortly. But here you are, that is you as a student or a candidate, you know, whichever um, one you, you prefer, all right? So you can either be technical, all right? You can also, you can either be non-technical, um, you can also be technical um, as well. All right. So the question is, who is a technical person? All right. Uh, this is not a definition um, from, you know, um, the dictionary, uh, but I'm only speaking from experience. All right. Um, um, by, by reason of, you know, uh, uh, privilege, I've spoken to a lot of people. Um, they have asked questions um, about how they can make a career switch. And when I speak to them, I, I tend to like, you know, gather a lot of information um, from them. And it's on the back of this conversation that I've had with, you know, hundreds and thousands of people that have come up with this, um, this illustration that could possibly help us to answer certain questions today. So I say again, that all of my audience, you will fit in into one of this category. You can either be technical or you can be non-technical. So a technical person is someone that loves technology, all right? So you love technology, you can be technically savvy. You know, you like all your iPhones and all of that, you know, so you are the type that if anything is broken, you just want to fix it yourself, you know, so you can open up your computer and want to repair. You just, you, you love, you, you love technology. We can call you a technically savvy person or technical, all right? But beyond that, um, so it could be someone by maybe virtue of what they do, all right? Um, they, um, uh, they're first line or second line or even third line support um, in information technology. All right, so they have experience. All right, so uh, so whether you know they are there helping to reset um, password or you know create or configure username. Um, they give me a sec. All right, so they 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 are doing that for their organization. So again, I will refer to them as someone that has some knowledge of technology. So again, I will call them a technical person. I mean, that may not be your own definition. Maybe your own definition could be someone that can write scripts, you know, break computer, hack, and all of that, all right? And that's all fine as well, but I'm not going to that kind of advanced, you know, definition of um, technical, all right? So there are someone that has a kind of minimal experience, all right, um, in information technology, all right? But the opposite, is the non-technical, all right? The non-technical, um, it's someone that does not, you know, maybe does not have that kind of experience um, in IT. So they, you know, they, maybe they have not worked as an IT person. They, um, they, they may love technology, but they haven't had the opportunity um, to work in an IT. They have a different background um, entirely. Um, they, they maybe they are business analysts, all right? Um, maybe they are project manager as, as a result of what they do um, at the moment. So again, just for my own you know, definition, I, I would say they are, they are non-technical, all right? Um, so they do not write code, they do not write scripts, um, they, don't, they don't do anything around networking, they are not a firewall guy, uh, they don't do configuration, um, they don't deploy patches and all of that, you know, so they manage projects, um, they, they are clever enough, you know, and they, you know, they are business um, harnesses, all right? So that is who they are. Then if you see here, on that non-technical, I also put others as well. So others could be someone that also have different background. Uh, maybe you come from a KYC background, um, you are a PPI case handler, um, you know, you, you know, you work in test codes, um, you know, um, you're a customer service person. Ah, yeah, you know, maybe you went to uni and you studied computer science, but listen, this is <laughs> life has just, you know, thrown you on the other side. You know, you haven't had the chance, you know, to get into IT and da, 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 da. But, you know, you did well in uni, but again, no formal experience. I would say you are non-technical, all right? I would say you're non-technical. So, Assuming that you come to us and you say, oh, Wally, I've heard so much about this cybersecurity. 
as a matter of fact, you know, during this lockdown, I've heard so much and I wanted to make a change in my career. I wanted to switch. Okay. So if you look at this journey of this student, all right, whichever category they fit in here, they want to come into cybersecurity. All right. Assuming you are a project manager and business analyst, let's say, who is a business analyst? All right. Many of you here, um, you are business analysts. So a business analyst is someone that has you know, very good understanding of a business objective. Um, they have great verbal communication. As a matter of fact, they have the ability you know, to run stakeholders meeting. They are good with documentation, you know, with great writing skills as well. They can do, they have great modeling skills. You know, they have fantastic and excellent time management and they can present as well. All right, so you have all of those skills as a business analyst, all right? And this is you here, okay? And maybe as a result of what you have also done as well, you have managed projects. But the project that you have managed or you've been involved in, maybe there are likes of, you know, uh, digital transformation um, projects. Um, you've been involved in regulatory compliance projects. Um, you've done projects around process transformation, okay? So that is you here, but you haven't done anything technical. You have not been involved in a technical um, project. And the same applies you know, to a project manager as well. So a project manager typically will have great leadership skills. Um, so they would also have ability to negotiate contracts. All right, fantastic scheduling um, skills as well. Risk management skills. You know, um, they would have quality management and ability to also manage tax as well. But maybe, maybe all the projects that you have managed here, they're also non-technical, all right? Um, I, I can see maybe your projects have been in housing, uh, process transformation, digital projects, okay? But you, you've heard so much about cybersecurity and you feel that, hmm, I have the basic skills and I want to go into cybersecurity. So if you look at this demarcation here, everything after here, I'm representing cybersecurity here. And... You don't know how to go about it. So what we normally advise, you know, uh, smart learning, and for a few people that, you know, have had the, the opportunity to talk to me, you see, I'm, of a bi I'm a big fan of taking a reasonable steps, you know, towards achieving your goal. Um, so assuming you're here as non-technical, you're a project manager, and all of a sudden you want to become a solution architect. Wow, that's a, that's a tall ambition. It is possible. But it's just that between where you are and where you desire to be is such a long stretch, okay? So, so I won't recommend that you just become a solution architect, all right? You can take reasonable steps. And what can you do? You can become a technical PM. Please follow me. It's very, very important, all right? And this is where a lot of people struggle. So... See, this, this illustration today is as a result of what I've, you know, again, my experience talking to people and the challenge that we have sometimes. So, and the challenge is, you know, we go and do courses that doesn't make sense. You know, we do exams that we can, we don't even use, you know, and sometimes you look at someone's CV, their project manager, and you look at, you know, um, a, a project manager, their AWS solution architect. They are a project manager, their AWS solution architect, their Azure solution architect, and you see all sorts of things. And even the person that is looking at you, they thought, you're overqualified. <laughs> Sorry, we can't employ you. And there is no relationship with all the certification that you earn, you know, to where you are. But we are a big fan of take reasonable steps. And what is that reasonable steps? If you are a BLA PM and you want to get into cybersecurity, first become a cybersecurity business analyst. Or first become a project manager in cybersecurity. So ends, you can see my arrow here pointing in this direction as technical BA or PM. So when I say technical, I just mean the word, I interchange the word cybersecurity, okay? But te technical is much more of a broader word or a broader term rather, you know, to represent cybersecurity and all other domains within cyber. All right, so you are following me. So that is PM and business analyst. Well, you see, all does here, you can be doing KYC 
or you are from PPI, case handling, or you are a customer service. You can even be a care worker, or you can even be an housewife, all right? Or no, I, I take the word housewife. There's nobody housewife. I take that word back. All right, but you can, you know, maybe you've taken a break in your career, you know, and, you know, you're looking after the children, but you're also non-technical, all right? So, you see, to get into the cybersecurity space, you can't just go all technical ones. It, it, it's good if that's your ambition, but you can start from where you are. And what we normally recommend, if you find yourself, you know, um, in that kind, if you find yourself here, and if you fall within this category of orders, then start off with governance, risk, and compliance. It is easy. All right? Um, so, <laughs> I, so when I, when, sometimes when I counsel people, well, not, not counsel, but when I speak to people and I advise them, and they come up with this great thing that they wanted to achieve, you know, um, they wanted to, you know, from being um, a business analyst and they want to become a solution architect. And I, I, so I, was, I use this word, I said, it is possible, you know, as a matter of fact, by divine intervention, you know, um, you, can, you can get that job. You know, God can bless you and you can get that job. All right? But you see, God will not do that job for you. Then the problem is, if for any reason you get that job, you know, you will suffer. The people around you will suffer because you, be, you, you start taking the job that you've been given at work. You take it at home. Even if you're married, your husband will suffer because you not even have time for the family. All right? So we're a big fan of, you know, don't, don't the ambition is great, but take sensible and reasonable step. Because by the time you start from a BA and you become a solution architect, like I said, again, by divine intervention, you get that job. Then everybody around you would be in problem because you'll be calling your friends to do your job for you. If they ask you something at work that you don't know, you'll go to the toilet and go and pick up your phone and start to call all of your friends. You know, you don't want to be in that situation. You know, you don't want to be in that situation. So taking reasonable steps is the best. All right? So from being BA, which is non-technical, become a technical BA. And gradually find yourself your way into cyber security. So if you look at my arrow here, so you can see the arrow is now pointing towards here. So you see, you can be here, and after you've done your time, you can become a cyber security analyst or even go into cloud or whatever it is. So by the virtue of what you're going to learn here in a project, on the, the work, the job, or on the job experience, you can be a cyber security analyst. All right, or even going to cloud. All right, but others we say start small with the non-technical aspect of cybersecurity. Governance, risk, and compliance would be ideal. But for you who is technical, you know you've done first line, second line, even third line support. You know you've done all of that. As a matter of fact, you are a network engineer. It's just that you know you do not understand cybersecurity. Then why not? You can take that step and become a cybersecurity risk analyst or you can take that step and become a cyber security cloud architect or something like that okay is this making sense to us i like feedback don't on don't talk to me but if this is making sense to you i i, I just like yes yes we will take questions later um, um i know some of you have have questions but if it's making sense and i'm communicating you know just say yes all right don't forget here this is just the model all right um Chances are you can be here, all right, as a BA, and you want to be here. It's not impossible, all right? You can do it. But like I said, take reasonable steps. You don't want to be in a job tomorrow, they sack you. You know what I mean? And you go into depression because someone asks you to leave. You know, <laughs> don't do that. Take reasonable steps, all right? Take reasonable steps because the reasonable steps I'm talking about here, so look at here. You know, you already have some basic, you know, uh, project management or business analysis skills that you can bring into this domain. As a matter of fact, when you get into this domain, guess what? You just have to learn technology. And I'm going to come back to that shortly. All right. But let's move on quickly. All right. So how do you now boost your career path? What do you do? So you can see these are the actors again, a project manager and a business analyst. So for us, I'm speaking from experience now, you know, so I'm not, you know, telling you anything theoretical, all right? Um, 
I'm telling you about what I have seen, what my hands have handled, all right? Um, what, by God's grace, that we have helped our students to achieve, you know, uh, whilst, you know, being on our platform. So this is from experience, okay? So again, you have basic project management or business analysis skill. I've already talked about all of that, what that means, you know? So a project manager, you're a great leader. You can negotiate contracts. You can do fantastic scheduling, you know, cost control, risk management. You can communicate well, fantastic stakeholders engagement. The same applies as well as a business analyst. You could do all of those great stuff. Please let us not share our, our screen. Uh, please, I beg you, so that we don't uh, mess up the recording, please. And let's keep, you know, our uh, um, background also um, noiseless as well, because this is being recorded. All right. So as a business analyst, you know, um, again, you great ability to run stakeholders meeting, uh, fantastic presentation skills, um, you know, all of those things that a BA would have. All right. Fantastic requirement gathering. You can translate requirement, uh, requirement into non-technical, you know, functions and blah, 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 blah. All right. But we said here that for you to be a technical BA or PM, it's also very, very important, you know, to learn some other skills. All right. So as a technical BA, you will need to understand and to be able to, com you know, to communicate complex um, technical problems, all right, to your audience. And who are your audience? Your product owner, your stakeholders, all right? Uh, but you see, the background that you are coming from, like I said earlier on, chances are maybe you have just all that you do, you know, are non-technical stuff, all right? Um, so you do not understand technology. So what you see here in this representation that I have here, you can see from here, Basic project management, let's, let's start from uh, business analysis. Basic business analysis skills. Then I have some combinations here, which I call identity access management, password access management, network and system security, and cloud governance. So these are examples of courses. Because I mentioned something earlier, and if you're following me, I said this individual now, when you want to become technical, you know, you must have ability to communicate, you know, what is similar like a complex technical problems, you know, to your audience. But someone have to train you. Someone have to teach you. Someone have to show you. As a matter of fact, you must also be able to communicate to your client tech, uh, technology. You must be able to communicate to your, to, your, uh, to your client technology. You must be able to explain requirement from technical um, viewpoint to your audience and to your stakeholder. You know, to a point that, you know, they can derive a kind of technolo uh, technological um, solution that would help to meet that organization need. All right. So you can hear, you can see here, we keep talking about technology. We keep talking about technical. All right. You have to learn that. Fortunately, you have to learn that. So from experience, those that want to trans, you know, that want to transition into cybersecurity to become technical BA or technical PM, the route that we in smart learning take them through is this route that I've just shown you now. So we teach them, so we know technologies are, there's a whole lot of technology out there, but we start them off by teaching them identity access management. You cannot go wrong with IAM. Do you know why? <laughs> you see, the major problem that a lot of cloud service provider look to solve, even cloud customers, cloud customer, you know, tend to solve these days is the problem of identity. As a matter of fact, if you learn it, you know, if you learn that technology, it won't be too long that somebody will want to talk to you. So that's, again, learning technology from a VA viewpoint. Password management, one of the major challenges that most organizations have. All right? Network and also system security as well. Some of you must have heard about firewalls, routers, switches, IDS and IPSs, all sort of controls that most organizations put in control, you know, to protect or to defend themselves. You also have to learn it. So if you have to be a project manager, you know, that would, you know, manage, schedule, you know, organize, communicate projects, you know, to businesses and to their audience, then this is very, very essential. So what we do in smart learning to route you through this path, to bring you to become a technical PM or BA, we train you on some of these courses. As a matter of fact, as a BA, rather than trying to go through the, you know, the complex rigor of becoming a solution architect. Why don't you learn 
you know, cloud governance. <laughs> it's, if, for some of you that understand what cloud governance is, in fact, a BA would do very well in cloud. And this, this again is taking reasonable and sensible steps towards achieving a desired goal. Reasonable and sensible step towards achieving, like I see, I, I, I say it again, there's nothing wrong with your ambition to become a solution architect. But from a BA to a solution architect, when you put out the CV there, even if the CV is bogus, right? You put all of the things that you want to put there. And like I said, by divine orchestration, you get the job. It's, it's, it will still come back to bite you because now you'll be running around to look for friends, calling them in the toilet, you know, to want to support you to do your job for you. And listen, everybody's busy. In fact, if they help you one, two or three or four times, and the next time they won't pick up your call. So what is it? Take reasonable steps, you know, towards achieving your desired goal. So that is the route that we take our students. The same is similar for PM as well. So I'm assuming here, your PM, you are non-technical. And you want to go into technical, be, uh, to become a technical PM, the same route. You know, you can start off with identity access management, password access management, data loss prevention, you know, um, courses. Then you could also, you know, have to do cloud governance as well. And as you get comfortable and you get here, you can see here, I had a trophy here. So trophy here is, oh, you've done very well and you're successful. Then you become a technical BA or a technical project manager. In other words, you become a BA in cybersecurity or you become a PM in cybersecurity. So this is the way that we have tested. So again, I'm using the word, this is the way that I know that I've tested that has worked for a lot of people and I'm recommending it to you, all right? So the next actor is the technical and the non-technical. So we've dealt with PA, BA and PM, but now we're dealing with you know, um, a technical and a non-technical person. I've already defined who they are anyway, um, earlier on. So a technical person, the assumption here is maybe they, you know, they are technically savvy, uh, right? Maybe they studied you know, um, computer science in uni and all of that, you know, uh, maybe they've, you know, done some IT work before, they've done first, first line and second, second line support. And yet, you know, they wanted to go into cybersecurity. So this is their desired destination. So their desired destination is here. They wanted to get here. All right. But how do they start? All right. They can start up with some of these courses that we have here. And the good thing about what we do is, you know, we take you, we give you from Grand Hop. As a matter of fact, our courses, we have beginners, intermediate. Also, we have advanced as well. But listen, if you haven't done this thing before, don't go into advanced. Start from um, uh, beginner. Well, if you have some knowledge, then you can start from intermediate. So our courses, they're a mix of intermediate and also advanced as well. So if you're technical and what, that's the direction that you're going to go, this is the example of courses that we have. Cybersecurity risk management, network and system, network and system security, vulnerability management, penetration testing, cyber, um, cyber threat hunting, SIM design, and also implementation. These are all examples of technical courses, all right? So you must enjoy technology. You must appreciate technology. You must want to learn it, you know, for you to benefit from here. And guess what? You would end up, you know, as any of this. You could become a cybersecurity risk analyst, cybersecurity analyst, you could become a SOC analyst. You could become a vulnerability manager. As a matter of fact, you could go into pen testing or you could become a solution architect, all right? So a combination of these courses carefully can lead you to this destination. On the other hand, if you're non-technical, that's another actor. So a non-technical is that person. Let me quickly juggle your memory again. I said it could be someone from KYC. It could be from some firm that's done PPI case handling. It could be you you know, that you're working, you know, as just a, a customer service. They're both, listen, you're clever. As a matter of fact, in smart learning, we believe, you know, that everybody has got something. That is my, <laughs> my belief. I believe that nobody's stupid. I believe nobody um, is an idiot. I believe um, nobody, I, I, I don't believe that when you come that you don't have anything upstairs, all right? Um, you know enough, maybe you don't know, even know. You know, it's our responsibility to help you to unnest your skills. We do that a lot by talking to you. We find out what you have done before. You know, so you can be a case handler, but listen, inside of you might just be, 
you know, a deposit of wealth of technical skills that you have even unnessed yet. And there's a whole lot of people like that. Okay. So by speaking to you, sometimes you're able to recommend, you know, courses for you. But assuming that you're non-technical and, you know, we want to start you small, then we start you with governance, risk and compliance. You can, you can do with this. All right. You, you, they are not overly complex. So, for example, Roy has been so magnanimous, you know, teaching us about ISO 27001, you know, in the last couple of days. You know, and some of you can relate to some of these things. Even if you spend quality time there, you will learn it. You know, so it doesn't involve any scripting. It doesn't involve any IP addressing. It doesn't involve, you know, you configuring a DHCP server or a DNS. It doesn't involve you, you know, putting patches there. I mean, the knowledge of all of that is good, but that is not your job, you know, as a non-technical person. So GDPR is fantastic, as opposed to what most of you people think that GDPR is gone and dusted. It's a lie. <laughs> let me just quickly let you know. It's a lie. GDPR will forever be here, as a matter of fact. If you're going to be successful as a cybersecurity risk analyst, or both technical or non-technical, then GDPR, you have to know it. As a matter of fact, the same is the new oil is data, or data is the new oil. And among the information assets that we protect in the cybersecurity domain is data. PPI, we talked about it yesterday, all right? So you have to learn GDPR or any other regulation that is important in whatever jurisdiction that you find yourself. But the good news is, I mentioned something, GDPR is being referenced all over the world, all over the world. It's the best regulatory you know, um, um, law that has come out from Europe in a hundred years. So you cannot go wrong learning GDPR. All right. So I mentioned earlier on that, you know, Nigeria, we're also doing NDPR as well. And if NDPR is a copycat of GDPR, so if you know GDPR, then you know NDPR. I mentioned something about Ghana earlier on as well. So if you know GDPR, if you're a Ghanaian and you want to go back home or you want to do business, then you're in a good place. All right. So GDPR is a great place to start. Then obviously, you know, the cybersecurity fundamentals. All right. For you that are non-technical, the cybersecurity fundamentals is one of our beginner course and would like to take you through that journey. Don't forget, you see, um, you, you can't, you, you cannot, um, um, <laughs> you know, my father used to say something which is quite interesting. You know, he, he said, uh, uh, you can't climb a tree from the top, all right? If you see anybody that climbs a tree from the top, you know, something is wrong. They are not, they are not human, all right? So we all start from somewhere. We climb the, we climb the tree from the bottom, all right? So this is you starting from the beginner level, especially if you're non-technical, you know, to learn it. Sometimes, you know, again, by divine orchestration and by divine intervention, sometimes, you know, God will just intervene for us and we'll get a fantastic job. But you would agree with me that there's a whole lot of gap in your knowledge. Gaps. That's why you go to a meeting, somebody will say something, just be like, ah, what did they say? Then you go back, you start to Google. Even when you Google, you know that you don't understand it. It's because you do not have the right foundation. So building up the right foundation is very, very important. And how do I mean? Learning it from the fundamentals. All right, then you can go into risk assessment as well. So you can see that I have in, the, um, in the, this first uh, 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 route here, I had uh, risk management. I also have risk management. What is the difference? Yes, as a non-technical person, you may end up as a risk analyst. Yes, cybersecurity risk analyst. All those things I'm saying to you, listen, I have hundreds of you know, testimonials. My students, you know, who have, you know, seemingly come from a non-technical background and they've handled up as a cybersecurity risk analyst, all right? They know enough, you know, to, you know, um, um, risk assess a technology and to make recommendations for it. But that is where their job really stops. Anyway, they do not go ahead, you know, they don't go further to start to, like, you know, configure or make changes. But at least they know when they find a risk and they can make recommendations. You can also do that as well, all right? You just have to love technology and want to learn. All right, then cloud governance um, is another big thing. Like I said, a lot of DAs can get away with this. It is non-technical, it's more around business, how you can effectively manage you know, um, cloud offerings. The problem that most organizations have, you see, as easy, as agile, as scalable, as um, um, cheap that cloud may be, <laughs> the interesting thing is, if it is not properly managed, an organization can even run bankrupt. They can incur so much cost without knowing because you see, when you spin up a service, you know, every time you do that, you know, guess what? Money is going into Amazon, money, money is going into AWS, 
or money is just being you know going into uh, Google or whatever vendor that you use. So it's important that what most organizations now realize is yes, this cl cloud thing is great. You know, as a matter of fact, it takes all the burden away from us. But if we're not careful, we would incur more costs than you know when we had our traditional you know um, 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 traditional um, um, computing systems, all right, which is our data center. So again, uh, they now have to put some level of go governance in place. You can't go wrong here. It is not technical, all right? You just have to learn a lot of metrics and we have that covered for you if that you're interested in that course. Then obviously as well, um, Cloud Computing Foundation, which is the course that we taught you um, earlier on. And um, just also to let you know that, you know, um, anybody that wants to learn Cloud Computing Foundation again differently, um, uh, what we show you was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I didn't show you everything, all right? There's so many things um, that, you know, I would introduce into that course curriculum that even, even more, make it much more, you know, um, interesting. All right, then this is where you can end up, all right? You can either apply for a job as a GRC specialist, you can go into third party risk uh, management, you know, vendor management, a very, very interesting area. Anybody can do it. You can become a security compliance officer. As a matter of fact, you could also become a cloud advisor as well. All right, these are all the possibilities. So everything that you see to my far right, all right, where the, where the trophy is, these are all the job titles, all right, that you can apply for. That when you go through this route, you know, um, that we have channeled for you, you can become any of this, all right? So I'm, I'm sure you're still there and you're listening to me. And um, I know a lot of you have questions, but I'm going to take that question um, shortly. All right, so in this next slide, what I wanted to show you now is a lot of questions. People would ask me, so Wale, what certification do I need to do? As a matter of fact, there was a gentleman yesterday, I think it was Obi now, you know, was saying, oh, Wale, do you have um, a dump for CISMP, all right, <laughs> which is the Certified in Information Security Management Principle? And you see, great questions. And a lot of people of color, you know, they will come to me and, you know, they ask for certifications and all of that. And it's all good. It's all good. But listen to me. Listen to me. Don't do too many certifications. Sometimes it's too much. Somebody can look at your CV and they can say you are too overqualified. And the problem is, is because, you see, you cannot, all right? If, if we look at it, by the time you, 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 you are BA, you have uh, all the AWS thing. And somebody will look at you and say, ah, you, only you, you have all of this certification. <laughs> all right and they can't reconcile that back to the content of your cv so again do sensible certification reasonable ones the one that will position you for the job that you are going for all right um, or the desire that you know the, the future that you desire for yourself so again let's say you are starting from here i'm talking about a technical and a non-technical uh personnel so you see the direction upward here i hope you can see my arrow or my cursor the direction up here, they are all technical, all right? These are examples of certifications that are out there. I mean, much more than this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just have to, you know, limit it to this one. Then my course of downwards here is non-technical, all right? Okay, so let's start with the technical. Assuming that your end goal, again, you want to become a SOC analyst, um, you want to go into, um, you want to become um, a SOC engineer, you want to become a cyber security analyst and all of that. If that is your end goal, then you should be looking towards, you know, some of this certification that I mentioned here. All right. So where do I start? That is the main challenge that people have. So if you do not have formal experience, so people will say, oh, you see ISSPO, now the thing where they sell with that. Oh, it's season. Everybody will just run towards that. And because a lot of us, people of color, we're quite studious. We can read book like not, we will read the book. We'll do all the dumps and we'll pass the exam. But the, the problem is, if with the certificate, you, 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 when they ask you, especially here in the UK, a lot of you would agree with me. Here in the UK, it's not so much of the certification. It's what you can do. Because listen, if, they, if it's all about certification, then they would deprive others of the same job whereby they do not have certificate. So it's a, it's a, a level playing ground here in the UK. All right, whereby, yeah, you have certificate. That's fine. I'll call you for an interview. Then I'll look at someone else that doesn't have certificate. All right, let me hear what they have great CV. Let me hear what they want to say as well. And sometimes with all the certification, you come across so, you know, you, you know, to the interviewer, they are so disappointed because they just know that, yeah, maybe you, you know, even some of them, they would think, oh, they've got to buy a dump somewhere, 
you know, they've seen the, they've gone to Indian, you know, maybe their Indian friend has written the exam. I'm, saying, I'm not saying that is you, ladies and gentlemen, you know, but I'm just telling you all the possibilities that are out there. You know, maybe someone wrote the exam for them, you know, and they just start to like, you know, you know, put out the certificate thinking that the certificate will give them the job or will hand them the job. No, no, no. It doesn't happen here in the UK. The best the certificate will do for you is it will put you right in front of the interviewer. All right. They will like you if you're able to scale the hurdle anyway. So when the recruiter call you and you sound okay, like you know what you're doing, then you still have to face you know, the, your, your, you know, your potential employer for the interview, all right? So where do we start? So if you're a newbie here and you wanted to, you wanted to, all right, um, Colapo, don't send me an email, uh, text, please, um, if you're on this call. Uh, if you can all hear me, um, that's fine, and I believe so. Uh, don't, don't send me a text message. Let's just focus on what, every other question that you have, they can come later, okay? Um, I appreciate you may have questions. Is Tunde here? Let's quickly do a, a, a check again. Hello, Ali. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. Fantastic. All right. Please, lay us with, um, um, with Harry. Um, Harry has been, you know, um, been in the background helping out. Um, okay. And don't forget to you know, get the link ready. Um, yeah. Um, I hope I send it to you. Get the link ready. Yeah, yeah, ready to, should I post it? No, not yet. Just okay. get the link ready. Um, okay. then um, when it is right, we can post it and we can, you know, I just want to make sure that we're all set. Um, all good. And those that cannot maybe click on the link, they'll produce, they'll provide their email and get your email already. And, you know, we can just, you know, send everything to them. But when you're sending the email, don't forget blind copy it. All right, it's important. You know, so, so we keep um, uh, uh, security. All right. So you can, you can start from here. All right. So this is, this is basic. Like someone asked me, I think it was Obina. All right, this is quite basic. All right, especially if you do not have any formal experience. Maybe you've done the training. Um, don't jump and go and do, start to do uh, CISSP. All right, it's good. But build yourself up. You have basic knowledge. All right, so that you, you can even defend um, your, your certificate at the end of the day. All right, so I would say start from here. Contia Security Plus, very, very good. Very, very good. Very, very good. But if you, have, if you don't come from a technical background, don't start to read Contia Security Plus. You see, let me quickly say this, because some, 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 some people might just be saying, oh, Wally, you are discouraging us. No, no, I'm not discouraging you. I've been in this space, and I know what I'm talking about. Time is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Time. It's very, very important. So, assuming you're non-technical, you pick up Contia, or you pick up Season, and you start to read it and spend, you know, burn, burn the night uh, candle and all of that, and you study and you study and you study, maybe by chance you can pass it, all right? And, um, well, it won't happen in a day, because if you're non-technical, I doubt if, the, the least, the, the, the amount of time that you can spend reading it to understand it, it might take you three months, even more than that. As a matter of fact, some people study for six months, all right? So you can imagine if you have to study between three months and six months to do this exam, guy, it's a long time. You can be discouraged. So you can imagine when you now do the exam and then the issue, the, the, the job issue is now there as well. It, it, it can be quite stressed and you know, stressful and also discouraging as well. I'm, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you this because for my students, I've known what, you know, the, the, the challenges that they've had. Um, and, and I said, don't go through all that regal. Let, let's show you the path that you can take that can make this journey easy for you. All right? Um, from experience, I've, by God's grace, I've, I've been in this career for over 17 years. All right? And when I say things, it's because I'm talking from experience. And, you know, it would benefit you. Okay? So, don't take a jump from here and go here and do offensive security certified professional. It's, it's a long jump. It will take you forever to get there. You can see like this arrow is just shooting upwards, but you can take reasonable steps from here, there, that, that, and get here. All right, that's exactly what I'm going to. So certification is good. But here in the UK, you must also be able to prove it. Okay, you must be able to prove it. So that's where a lot of people have certificate and they don't have a job. Okay, so what do I mean? By the time, if you aim to do certificate, also go where they would show you. The showing is very, very important when you get hands-on experience. 
all right, where you will be involved in a project, you know, where, you know, you will get your hands dirty, then you can back that up, all right, with your certificate, all right, so whatever that you've read in a book or whatever that you've been forth on, you know, then it becomes flesh, all right, um, you know, if you're a Christian here, they will say the word become flesh, you know, so, you know, whatever that they've, they've said to you, it will become flesh to you, all right, because your hands have handled it, all right, you have configured the firewall, you have written policies and processes, you have done gap analysis, you know, you have advised, you have advised your client, so, you know, that is the practical aspect of it, and guess what, when you speak to recruiter, those are the things that you say, your, like I said, you, the, the best your certificate will do, it will put you in front of the recruiter, all right? But what you say would be the experience that you have gathered, okay? Um, but this is where we, um, this is what we do that is different, all right? And I'm going to be bringing you that later. All right, so that is you going in that direction. You can follow all of that. Uh, this are example of um, 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 ISC Square. Um, ISC Square is just another certification body. So if you want to go in that direction, uh, again, by all means, we can help you, but we'll talk about that later. Um, then we have, if you want to go in the cloud, all right, if you want to become a cloud solution architect. You see, I have, you see, you see this arrow that I put here? I didn't just put it here, like, I didn't just put this course randomly. You know, I have carefully selected that courses. It's like, you know, you're, no, you know it's not a prayerful site, but it's advisable to take that step. So if you want to do computer, you can start from here, that way, that way, that way, that way, and you can get here. Yeah, it kind of make logical sense rather than you here and you jump here. All right. So if you look at if you want to become a solution architect now, the three main vendors in the market, if it's not AWS, it would be cloud, a Google Cloud. If it's not Google Cloud, then it's Microsoft. Or okay, as yours. All right. Those are the three main vendors, big vendors public, you know, cloud um, provider. We also have a lot of, you know, private cloud providers as well. We have IBM and so many of them that are out there, all right? Because they are private, you know, maybe you do not know them, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, negate the fact that, you know, they are there as well, all right? But a lot of us were familiar with those three brands, all right? But what I've also seen that a lot of people are doing now is they do all of these AWS course, you know, as you, they are all good. They are all good, but they are vendor specific, vendor specific if you want to start your journey to become a solution architect do not jump into vendor specific start with ccsp certified cloud security professional do you know why it would give you the cushion it would give you the background all the knowledge that you need to know so we're talking about jurisdiction we're talking about you know data type we're talking about cloud storage we're talking about different types you know so um, um, earlier on. But you see, you will not learn it from vendor specific. Vendor specific could only tell you what they do. See, the, what they call storage, you know, in AWS, for example, they call, maybe EC2 and all of that, is different from what they call storage in Azure, even in Google Cloud. So you would only learn vendor specific. They are good, don't get me wrong. But listen, start from a native cloud, which is the CCSP. Native cloud is great. It will tell you all the underlining component of what make cloud technology. So you remember yesterday or two, two days ago, you know, um, um, Roy was teaching you about, you know, um, the open stack and the cloud stack. And he, he walked you through, you know, all of those stacks. You see, if you go to AWS, and you, they will be vendor specific, but you will, not, you will not understand the foundation, what make cloud tick and thin, but you can learn it. Um, from CCSP, all right? But others are also good as well. These ones are good, you know, but if I am going to start this journey at all, I will start from here. All right, let's go into non-technical. The non-technical um, is, um, like we had today, the certified um, ISO 27001, no, ISO 27001 Foundation. We had that last week. If you want to be certified in that area, I work in partnership, you know, with Roy. Uh, who is a certified you know, PCB uh, provider. Uh, we can help in that area. You can take that route as well. Like I said, you see, if you apply yourself to everything that Roy has taught us you know, so far, even if you pick you know, uh, the foundation that we did, you can go to our YouTube channel where you can go and watch it. And you watch you know, uh, the certification process that you know, Obiageli taught us, Ngozi, you know, fantastic. You know, and you, you, you watch the video that we had yesterday and today, you'll be fine. 
you, you, you will be fine. You don't need to be you know, all technical and be writing scripts and be breaking computer for you to be able to learn you know, this bit, all right? So I will recommend that journey from 27,001 foundation um, to the 27,017. Again, if you want to get uh, certified, we can also help you as well. Then up to, if you want to become a lead implementer, then lead auditor, all right? So the lead implementer uh, is another aspect of the ISO, all right? So again, you can look at all the market value um, or the market acceptance, if I can put it that way, on, your, on the internet for each of this um, um, certification. They are great. As a matter of fact, I'm a lead auditor certified. I'm technical, but you see, in, the, in my career, in my journey, I started from technical background, you know, pulling cable, uh, connecting cable, setting up computers and all of that. That's how I started, all right? Uh, but over time in my career, I started navigating towards the governance, risk and compliance bit, all right? So I, I moved from technical and then I went into non-technical, all right? And you, that could be the journey for you as well. So you can move, you know, can start from non-technical and, you know, find your way into technical, but the point is, you know, start from somewhere. And it's always good to have a defined, all right? Look at, so that's why I have it here. This is your point of reference. This is where you're starting from. And you can either go that way, maybe technical and go the non-technical, all right? These are all the certifications that you can do under the non-technical as well. CSA, all right, very, very good. These are ICICLE courses. And we also can help you with this as well if you're interested in them. Um, C-RISK, Spirit is good, you know, which is certified in risk an information system. I'm also certified C risk. I'm, you know, uh, uh, I'm certified in C risk as well. You know, so this is very, very good. Um, if you want to become a, a cybersecurity risk analyst, very, very good course to do. CISM, CISM is certified information security manager. All right, and also um, and so many other ones that are out there. But again, you will be tending towards you know the governance risk and compliance. You know, um, if you have this certification, very, very good to have. All right, I have to move quickly. Um, now, but here we're saying this is the cybersecurity certification pathway for a great career. Do not get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, there are other certifications that are out there. All right. Um, this is just how far I can go, because if I have to talk about everything, then we will not, you know, um, leave here. All right. Okay. This is very, very important. And um, um, I want you to pay very, very good attention. We still have about 15 minutes. Um, then we can round up the section, then we can do the assessment, all right? And we can take questions, okay? Uh, so this will be getting ready. Don't post the uh, link yet, but be getting ready. Okay, so this is my bucket. So this is smart learning. This is you here, all right? So what I wanted to achieve, so I'll talk you through all the possibilities that are out there, whether you're technical, non-technical, with all the possible courses that we have. So for us in smart learning, our courses, you know, we have over 25 courses, even going to 30 now. All right, that's how far that we have gone. Okay, and I said you can be all technical, you can be all non-technical, or you can be both. As a matter of fact, someone can choose a bit of technical course and add it to a non-technical course. So I call it a bucket. So for us in smart learning, what we do is you can bundle your courses. Okay, you can bundle courses. You can bundle up to four courses, okay? And pay a price of one. You can bundle up to four courses and pay a price of one. So for us, we want to help um, you and, um, to select the course that would fit your immediate goal, all right, for now, and also the future you know, that you plan for yourself. Like I said, someone can start from technical, and route their way, you know, or their way into non-technical. So what does this mean? In my bucket, which is all the courses that we have, is much more than this, you know, I just have to, you know, represent with a few. So if you decide that, okay, while well, I get it now, I want to go through the non-technical route. Oh, I get it now. I'm a BA, but let me try the, the technical BA. Oh, I'm a PM, but I want to go in the technical PM. Oh, I'm non-technical at all, but mm, that end goal about GRC specialist, and that, that, that or cybersecurity risk is all good for me. I want to try that direction. All right. So what it means is you can come to us and you can select, you know, four courses from this list. And let me show you what that means. All right. So it means that you can select from this into your own bucket, you know, cybersecurity risk management, 
cybersecurity fundamentals, governance risk and compliance, and general data protection regulation. All right, so you could select up to four courses. But what we also wanted to do for you, and this is the start, first time you know, we're putting this package together. As a matter of fact, we can also, you know, I've been talking about certification earlier on, that it would be nice to have one certification, isn't it? All right, so all the courses that I've just shared with you, that I've seen, you've seen here, the first, the one, two, three, and four, you will be trained, all right, not from theoretical viewpoint, but from practical viewpoint. What that means to you is, once you get trained, you will get your hands dirty in a project-based environment. That project-based environment can either be live project or a simulated one. Some of my students that are here can attest to it. All right, um, so this is not, we're not trying, this is no gimmick. Uh, we're not trying to, you know, fake or any, do anything here. You would get opportunity to put into practice what you have been taught, either in a simulated environment or on a live project. It's important that I let you know that we're not just only a training organization. We're consulting for businesses as well. And by privilege, you know, we have some businesses that we're working for, or, you know, now. And some of them that are not high profile, we're able to get our students involved, all right, um, in a life project, okay? But we thought about certification earlier on. So if you're non-technical, we talked about a few certifications that are out there. We talked about the high school family, which I'm still going to come back to um, uh, uh, later. We also talk about some isaca related um, 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 uh, family um, that are out there, all right? We talked about CISA, season. Um, we talked about C risk, okay? So we're overly generous this time. So we said that take four, all right, of hands on practical training, which is an example of what we show here. And you can pick among the non technical, I'm talking about, I'm addressing technical people now. Um, among the technical ones, uh, sorry, among the certification ones under the non technical, you can pick one certification course. But it's important that I quickly say this to you. We will train you on it to go and write the exam. But the cost for the exam, you have to pay for it. Okay? You will pay for the exam. A season, today, can you Google something for me? How much is season? Is it usually in dollars? You know, just tell me if you're able to find it. So you would go to ISACA and book your exam. All right? Um, today is one of the ESCOs in ISACA, so you can point you in the right direction. But we will train you um, to be able to go and do that exam. And where possible, by God's grace, you pass it. So, so generous, um, you would agree with me. All right? But every other one, uh, please put yourself on mute. We've been, we've been having a fantastic run so far, you know, uh, please. Okay. All right. Uh, well, it, uh, just to say the exam, the ISACA exams, you're looking at roughly towards the 550 to 600. In pounds or dollars? In pounds. In pounds. Thank you. Yes. Then, uh, um, Ari, can you also check for me, CISA and, um, um, and C-RISK? CISA and C-RISK. Is, is it for the exam or for the course? For the exam. Okay. Just for the exam. So, because it's important that we make this very clear to people as well, you know, just to say that. So, we will train you, but you will pay for the exam. All right. You can see that I've splashed the price, you know, from 1350 you know, to six fifty. Um, um, but we will train you, but you would, so that when you think about this and you want to make an informed decision for yourself, you will know what is um, um, involved. All right. Um, so, that's one aspect, non technical. All right, assuming that you want to go technical. All right, so you can see another different combinations there. Writing, penetration testing, vulnerability management, and threat hunting. You might want to do CISSP, all right? My team and I would train you so the red teaming, the penetration testing, the vulnerability management, you will be trained, you will be hands-on and practical for you. All right? Um, we will show you, in fact, you will get opportunity to carry out, um, you know, um, penetration testing. We'll teach you how to create a lab, you know, for yourself. You know, um, I've got a fantastic guy that does that for us. Um, it will teach you, 
we will train you what penetration testing is. Um, you'll be able to create a lab for yourself you know, going forward. We'll teach you what vulnerability management is. You might even get opportunity to practicalize that on some of our life um, environment. Then what threat hunting is as well. Threat hunting very quite similar you know, to red teaming. So red teaming is one of our new courses, all right? So if you want to be the SOC guru, all right? <laughs> you know, the security operation center guru. And, you know, you want to go into, you know, uh, become a cyber security or an enterprise defender, then these are the sort, sort of courses that, you know, might be good for you. Then CISSP would also be good for you to have, all right? If you want to go in that direction, then you can talk to us, okay? Still at that price. Then the last one that we have here is for you, um, um, a technical BA or a PM. So I mentioned earlier on that you can choose identity access management. You can never go wrong. I say this identity access management, you can't go wrong with it. You know, it's a major problem in enterprise, in most enterprise, and they're looking to solve that. Then combine it with password management. You could combine it with data, protect, uh, data loss prevention. You could also combine it as well, you know, uh, with network and system security. Or maybe if you don't have any formal knowledge, you can start with cybersecurity fundamentals. Again, you also get opportunity to choose one certification course which you would pay, you know, the, the exam, the booking of the exam, you book it with ISACA, not with us, okay? Uh, but the cost of training you and bringing you up to speed where, you know, um, you'll be able to write this exam, you know, uh, we'll do it. We'll provide you sample, sample um, exam questions um, as well, uh, where that is um, possible. All right, so this is the model, all right, for us. Then this is ISO family. Um, so the ISO family, um, is different. I don't know if Roy is here. Um, so if you want to do the 27,001 lead implementer, the actual price is 1,500. And if you want to go in that direction, the discount price is 1,310. The same as well for lead auditor. If you want to combine both, then we might be able to work out discount for you. I don't know what that is, but I will check with Roy. Um, for the certify ISO 27,017, um, I'm waiting for Roy you know, to provide uh, the cost implication um, for that one, the ISO family. All right, so this is what we have. Then lastly, candidate's journey. All right, um, then after this, we'll do our assessment. The floor will be open. I know a lot of you have questions for me. Um, I hope I haven't conv well, confused you. I hope this has been cleared enough um, and you understand everything. But this is the journey for us. So in smart learning, is an end-to-end training. So for us, we have moved away from just where they train people and they leave you to your fate. No. All right. And my student here, uh, if I have some of them, they can attest to what I'm talking about. All right. So we provide end to end. So this is the desired goal for everybody, secure a job. But this is where you start. So maybe for some of you, you might have seen, I've spoken to you over the phone, you know, and I keep asking questions. I spoke to a gentleman yesterday. And um, so he did IT in the 80s and he wanted to come back, you know, to cybersecurity or some, something like that, you know. And in a small days, you know, that is, is good. But you, you know, I spent quality time, you know, asking him a lot of questions. So what did you do when you did your IT in the 80s? And, you know, what, what was it? What did you work on? And he was telling me some of the projects. And indeed, you know, he, he was involved in some very fantastic uh, projects. But it was a long, that was a long time ago. Then it, again, all of the questions around what does you like now? Are you technical? Are you non-technical? And this is where we do the personality trait assessment. We ask a lot of questions. Some people are technical in nature, to be honest. You know, um, they, they, when you speak to them, you know, you know their heart beats just by speaking to them. Chances that they may have not, you know, maybe privileged to do anything technical, you know, but the way they are wired up, they are technical. And such individual, it, can be, it will be easy for them. So when you start to teach them technical, they, they understand it. Why others, they can't even stand anything technical. <laughs> because if they hear the word computer or scripting, they just run away, all right? But there isn't anything wrong. You see, whichever category that you find yourself, we do a thorough job by doing you know, um, an assessment for you to understand how you're wired up in the inside and how that we can unnest you know, the way you are you know, to where you want to be or what you want to be, all right? Then candidate onboarding. After the assessment, and you still want to continue with us, and you feel that, ah, well, yeah, this is for me. I want to go ahead. And then we'll onboard you onto our platform. The onboarding is just very simple. We have a cybersecurity, uh, sorry, we have a cybersecurity WhatsApp group. 
uh, where we had you. We'd also give you access to our end, um, um, to our back end, where we store a lot or we keep, uh, we kept a lot of um, 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 cybersecurity related materials that you can learn from. You know, our previous uh, videos that you can also learn from as well. That's part of the onboarding. Then also we do the pre um, course as um, training. The pre course, we do it time and again, you know, but most times now we just send it, we send a video to you where you can listen to. As a matter of fact, you know, I've, I've been talking to you in the last one, one hour now. Uh, this is very similar to what a pre course uh, will look like. But pre course is uh, it's just very similar to when you want to go, and go to a university open event. Um, and you're not sure about the course that you wanted to undertake. So you go listen to professionals and alumni and they will tell you about what that course is. That's exactly what a pre-course is. That pre-course will just help you to get you informed about our courses and how, again, you can, you know, so that you don't buy the wrong thing. Because we realize that too many people buy the wrong thing. You know, you buy, as we buy the wrong shoe or the wrong clothing, you know, um, you know sometimes people buy the wrong courses. You know, um, because it is good and nice, you know, it may not necessarily be for you, you know what I mean? So a pre-course would explain all of that. And I think from what I've explained to you today, some people will feel, you know, encouraged, maybe a lot of people, and they'll feel like, okay, yeah, I understand it now. I can go back and think and come back to you, Wale, you know, and make a decision for myself. Then in the training, so our training is online mainly, uh, we've moved away from, we don't do a lot, we don't do classroom training anymore. In fact, we stopped doing classroom training a long time ago, even before COVID-19. All right, so, and the online training is as good as the uh, classroom training. As a matter of fact, um, it's even better because guess what? The online training, we do the recording you know, and we share the recording with you um, after the training. And you can listen to it over and over and again until you get, uh, you get it. The work experience, that is through our project-based um, um, environment. Um, then mentoring and CV review. Uh, this is part of the package as well. So when you train with us, um, after you finish the work experience, then you would, would do mentoring for you. I've got quite a number of mentors on my platform. I'm super blessed, you know, with uh, the men and women, you know, uh, that has you know, come together to support uh, this initiative. Um, you know, we, when you secure an interview, trust me, uh, even if you don't tell us we're here, we'll call you. <laughs> and say, you know what, let us help you. Because, see, we want to be part of your success story. Uh, you know, when you secure a job, it's good for us. You know, and um, it's good for you as well. Uh, so we go all the way out um, to support you uh, with interview, um, uh, with mock interviews as well. Uh, we have question banks that we share with you. Lots of videos um, that we've, you know, um, that we have in terms of people that we you know we've supported in the past. Um, you can watch those videos and just get yourself. So easy. We have a lot of you know wonderful, great people. You can see I was mentioning names earlier on Harry. You know. Uh, Tunde Shogalu and many of my colleagues that are here today, uh, that by God's grace that we have helped um, a lot of people, um, you know, maybe to better themselves um, in this journey. Then lastly, you secure a job. That's where you get the uh, trophy. Okay. Um, so it's an end to end. So even when you secure a job, there's something we do. We call it, you know, um, on the job support. On the job support, we do not, I'm not going to be in your office to do your job for you. Uh, but I know you are clever. But I haven't said that, you know, chances are sometimes when people, you know, start a new role, you know, the anxiety, all right, can, you know, be, they can, it can, they can be a bit, you know, <laughs> unstabilized, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, so we have a platform where we support um, people. Um, so if you have any question, which is work-related, um, there would be someone um, um, in our group um, that would come to your, um, to your aid and, and support you. Then obviously, we do what we also do, continuous learning. I mean, most of you, you have enjoyed our training in the last couple of weeks. Um, so it's part of our continuous learning. Uh, the ISO certification process is part of our continuous learning. We're bringing more your way. Um, I don't know if Ari was here earlier when I was talking about uh, what we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. We're going into data privacy. It's part of our continuous learning as well. Um, and that is free for our students and also to pro uh, prospective students as well. So what that means is even when you secure a job on our platform, you will continue to learn. All right, so uh, being on our platform, we will not ask you to bring extra money. No, we don't do that. All right, um, so we will say, well, because you are here now, you know, pay us another extra. No, as a matter of fact, the last three days, you know, has been free. Um, if, you know, and we've, for me, my wife can attest to it. Um, the, the, the presentation, the slide, everything that you see, I created it. I'm, I'm grateful to God 
uh, but you would agree with me that you know um, it's a lot of work. You know, so a lot of thought process in there. You know, I, I'm trying to get into your brain. You know, to think for you. Um, I'm trying to see how I can represent this in a way that you would understand. You know, so <laughs> it's not yams. You know, as they put it, it's not joke. Um, it's a lot of work. All right. So that is part of the continuous learning, and many more um, would be coming your way, especially for our community, uh, where we want to help people and help them, you know, be a better person um, in their career. All right. Um, so, guys, thank you for listening to me. It's been um, one hour um, or slightly more. Uh, so it's been great um, talking to you and explain uh, where we are and what we can do and how we can um, help. Um, so on our agenda, let me quickly, I know some of you have questions. We will take those questions. Don't worry. Uh, let me take you back. So on our agenda, we said what will follow is, I've already talked about the discount. What will follow now is the learning assessment. All right. So if you want to earn certificate um, from here, then we have about 24 questions that we'd like you to answer. Um, Tunde, are you ready? Let me pause this recording um, so that, you know, we have nice, great recording um, and we would upload this. Let me pause it so that we don't mess it up. Just give me a second. Uh, uh Hello, Wale. Just to uh, talk about the CISA uh, exam, uh, if you are a non-member, it is $760. Yes. If you are a member of ISACA, uh, it's discounted to $575. It's okay. roughly the same thing for CISM as well. CISM. Okay. Um, Wale, at the moment, um, there are some changes with that. So with COVID-19, there are quite a number of um, offers that ISACA is doing. But, um, I mean, for so many people that may want to come onto the course, um, once they sign up with us and all of that, they will get a, a, a lot more information on that, you know. Right. So there are quite a number of things that has been put in place, you know. So for anyone who is interested, who will be signing up with us, once they come on, you know, quite a number of information will be available to them at their fingertips. All right. Uh, thank you, Tunde. And um, for some of you guys here, um, so Tunde is an ESCO. Uh, with Isaka and um, he has served at the very, very top level. Um, so, and, you know, saying that with all sense of, you know, um, you know, responsibility because, you know, he knows how, not that, not anything dodgy, <laughs> not that he would, he would do anything and, you know, you, you get the membership. No, but at least, you know, um, he can guide you on how to get um, um, some discount, okay? And that's exactly what Tunde, Tunde is saying. All right. Um, so thank you, Ari, um, for those information. Really appreciate. Um, and thank you, um, Tunde, as well. So I would pause this recording now and we can quickly move um, um, into um, yeah, what we have.